Do you have what it takes to drive a golf ball over 250 yards? You just might without realizing it. And right after this, I'm going to show you how to do it. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com and welcome back to my uh, personal milestone series um, helping you get to your next driving distance milestone. If you missed them, I have already published uh, videos to get you out to 200 plus yards and then 225 yards. Now we're up to the 250 plus range. Maybe if you've been following along, you've been able to bump up to the next step with me. Um, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about um, what it's going to take you to get the ball 250 yards. Um, if you're new to my channel, um, know that uh, my journey is to hit longer, straighter drives off the tee that helps me make golf a lot more fun. Um, if you're on a similar journey, then you'll definitely want to consider hitting the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications uh, so that you're aware of the next time I publish, publish a video. So as with the other videos, um, everything kind of works on a sliding scale. So if you're really efficient at one thing, you don't quite have to be as efficient with everything else. But um, the minimum speed that it's going to take you, club head speed, it's going to take you is probably around 89 miles an hour. Now, I have a lot of students in the 90 mile an hour range that I teach, and very few of them can turn that 90 miles an hour into 250 yards. I only have a few. So to go 90 to 250, you are really, really swinging well, and you've got everything going for you. Um, I think on the TrackMan scale, which I will publish as part of an article with this video, um, a sister article, and that'll, you'll find that on my website. I'll, I will publish uh, the, uh, the graph that TrackMan puts out. And I think you'll find on there that 90 miles an hour with everything optimal, you could probably get into the mid to high 250s. Um, it's rare, if ever, that I've ever seen that. Those high water marks are really tough to attain. Um, I have to really do everything and, and cherry, cherry pick a drive to, that, that even reasonably comes close. So if you can hit a ball 90 miles an hour and hit it 250, you're doing amazing. However, most people are going to take a little bit more like 93 or 94 miles an hour to consistently get to that 250 barrier. Um, let's talk about some of the other things you're gonna need uh, in addition to the speed. Okay, so to reach the 250 yard mark today, um, I've got out a nine degree driver with a, with a uh, stiff shaft, just a st stock stiff shaft. Um, this nine degree is gonna be a little bit of a challenge for me because this driver was made, uh, I put this driver to perform best at say 97 or 98 miles an hour. So this nine degree in this particular make does not quite have enough lift to get me that optimal flight on it. Um, but it's not adjustable. So if I could build a perfect uh, driver for about 90 miles an hour, I'd build this out to either nine and a half or maybe 10 degree to get that extra lift on it. Now, keep in mind, you can't just grab any nine degree. Um, all driver makes tend to play different. For example, like a TaylorMade M1, which is a super low loft, uh, plays a super low loft because it spins so low. Um, you know, your, your optimal uh, loft for that make might be, certainly it's 10 and a half, and it might be even as high as 11 or 11 and a half would be about the equivalent uh, of this nine degree in terms of the amount of, of um, lift that it gives you in terms of uh, launch angle and backspin. Okay, so you need 90 miles an hour. You need a driver that fits you. Um, you're gonna need a launch angle, I would say, probably 14 degrees starts looking pretty good at this point uh, with a spin rate of somewhere between say 2100 to 2400 i think is going to really put you in that sweet spot 
to get what I talked about in the last video, a landing angle, which seems to be kind of universal, somewhere between say 33 and 36 degrees is a really good sweet spot for maxing out the distance on your drives. Now that's in just in a standard fairway. Um, I've gotten some, um, some notes, some comments from people that say, hey, we're, um, I don't get that much roll as you're getting. So I'm in Southern California. It's a little bit drier. Fairways are cut a little shorter, not so shaggy like they might be some other places, not as much moisture in the ground. Um, you might want to bump up a little bit to optimize more for carry. So look for that same article on my website that I will link to, that will be the sister to this, that will also give you the uh, carry optimizing chart so if you have to play all carry, uh, your, your specs are gonna go up a little bit in terms of um, optimal launch and spin and landing angle. Landing angle might be in the high 30s to even 40 degrees at that point. If you're in Florida or you're somewhere where maybe you get five or 10 yards of roll, uh, that sort of thing. So we talked about some other concepts um, on the last couple of videos. We know that you're going to have to hit up on the ball significantly, you're gonna get that efficiency. And it starts to become even more important now that we're moving up in speed and distance. The distance gap between hitting down and hitting up now starts to widen. Uh, in this case, I'd say the difference between hitting down and up starts to get into the 20 to 25 yard range. And that might be the only missing piece you've got is your angle of attack. So pay particular attention to your ball position and the angle that the club is attacking the ball from. Pretty much it's gonna have to come from shallow and on the inside so that it can bottom out about here. So I'm looking to bottom my club out just on the inside and about five, six inches behind the ball so I can, as it squares up, it's turning back upwards into the ball and I can get a nice high launch out of it, coupled with the fairly low loft here, I can get a reasonably low uh, amount of spin, and that's the combination that's gonna put you over the top, is that high launch, low spin ratio, hitting up on it um, with a fairly low lofted club for the job. It's still gotta be appropriate. Okay, let me give it a couple of uh, initial hits. Uh, we'll check the track man and we'll see how I've done. And then if there's any other points to make, uh, I'll point them out in a sec. Okay, so I'm looking for a swing of about 90 miles an hour-ish. And that's a gentle fade down the right center. I'm at... Uh, Okay, so I did okay on this first one. Uh, just for you dis disbelievers that leave comments, I will show you uh, close up here. So I needed a little bit extra to uh, do it. I needed 91.8 miles an hour and uh, to go 251 yards, but that's pretty good. Um, I think I'll try a couple more, see if I can get even more efficient than that. I think the ultimate goal here in this video for me is if I can get a live take where uh, I actually get under 90 and over 250, like let's say 89 point something and over 250, that would be a real coup. Um, hit up on the ball a little bit, I can improve on that. Launch angle of 11 and a half degrees, so that would go along with angle of attack. I could maybe hit up on it just a bit more, I'll try for that the next time. Um, but overall, that's a good drive and it's really efficient, so I'll take it. Much higher um, trajectory. This should be interesting to look at. Okay, give you a shot of that one. Even closer. <laughs> It's hard to tell where I'm going to put the phone up to this camera to see, let you guys see it at home. So I cheated a little, a little bit on the speed. Uh, I had set a sudden burst of uh, power there, 93 miles an hour to go 258. So still it's kind of the equivalent of 9250. I did okay there. 
Uh, I, me I met my goal of hitting up on the ball a little more at three degrees and that got me to launch the ball at 12 and a half instead. Um, my spin rate there was about 2200. So I'm really starting to fall in those optimal, uh, you know, the optimal channels that I need to get it out there. I'm a little bit off, but heck, that ball's out there 258 and it ended up two feet from the target line. So, hey, nobody's perfect. Nice high draw. This will be interesting. Okay. So this will be the best one by far to look at. Let me, uh, let me circle a couple of uh, important things here, show it to you. So I did a really good job with this one. Uh, at 90.0 miles an hour exactly, I was able to get 254 yards out of it so I've I've, I've won the game um, the difference there in you know I, I, we're looking at another maybe five or six yards of efficiency compared to the first two uh, was that I was able to launch the ball at 15 degrees and I hit up on the ball nearly six so just that little difference you know put me over the top um, another five yards the ball ended up four yards left of center so I hit a nice high draw out there and it finished right in the middle of the fairway so hey all the check marks were hit there uh, absolutely fantastic um, if you are having a hard time uh, achieving these upwards angle attacks that I'm getting and you noticed I was able to make the adjustment from swing to swing and get it higher and higher and higher um, I'm gonna leave a link to uh, a video called uh, Top Ways, or it, it talks about the top ways or the best ways that you can raise your angle of attack and pick up more distance up to 25, 30, even 35 yards, depending on how long of a hitter you are. So um, look for that down in the description, along with a couple of really cool freebies that I've put down there. Um, one is a video that will help you cure your slice, and um, that might be a big reason why you're not able to get to 250 uh, out of 90 miles an hour yet so you want to pick that up and then I've got a my free ebook that you can get uh, instant download uh, gives you a whole bunch of awesome tips on how you can do exactly what I'm doing right here all the little adjustments that you need to make from club fitting to swinging to looking for the ball, correct ball flight so there's a lot of folks that swing about this speed. I've swung anywhere from 90.0 up to about 93 miles an hour in these swings so far and it just turns out that the average uh, male golfer in the United States swings about 92 but the average distance is only uh, of a drive is only between say 215 and 220 yards so the average golfer is losing 35 yards or so um, due to efficiency so whether that's due to too much backspin, not the right driver for you, maybe you're launching it too low because your angle of attack is poor, maybe you're just missing the sweet spot quite a bit. Um, but there's a lot more potential for you to hit the ball out there. You see, I, I, I've shown you what's possible here for the relatively small amount of effort. Um, of course, to get this kind of efficiency that I'm showing you in this video, you're going to have to pretty max, pretty much max out um, every available avenue. I mean, I've got the club, I've got the, the swing, the ball position, the sweet spot hitting, the flight, everything is in my favor here. Um, so you really want to strive to get there, but don't be surprised if it takes you a few extra miles an hour to consistently do it. And of course, don't forget that adjustment you'll need to make if your fairways either run a little bit less, like on the East Coast or maybe in the desert, they might run a little more and you'd have to adjust accordingly um, your uh, angle of attack or maybe your uh, loft on your club. Um, hey, thanks again to Golf Development Complex, Moore Park, California, for this wonderful scenery. Um, I'm going to hit a couple more, but thank you very much for watching the video, and I hope to see you next time.